Hi, I'm uh, David Grahan. I'm uh, a computer engineer, and I just want to present some interesting ideas to you. Um, I wonder sometimes, are we living in a, already living in a simulation? Perhaps you've thought that too. Um, it's an old thought. It's a good thousand years old at least, but with computers it's made it a lot more interesting. We've come to this, um, this term called metaverse, what that is. So actually, you take the internet, perhaps you've heard of it. And you've taken gaming, perhaps you participate in gaming activities. Well, you smash those two things together, you have essentially the metaverse. This is this notion of being able to one single universal synthetic environment in which we're going to operate in the near future. It's the internet of the future, the next generation of the internet. This old concept of the simulation hypothesis is perhaps we're already living in a, a simulation. Perhaps we're all sitting right now, right now in a computer program. Is that reality or is it not? Or is some version of that? Are we 90% there, 50% there? I'm just going to give you some ideas that you can think about throughout this, this talk. Perhaps you've seen movies like The Matrix, Ender's Game, Ready Players One, The Free Guy. We've been playing around this and this sort of notion in the in the popular media for quite some time. And it sort of makes you think where we are. So consider this. We started with this notion of this idea of the world world brain in 1947, where someone said, hey, you know, if we put a lot of computational devices together, this is before electronic devices, we'd probably be able to build a computer big enough to actually emulate the human brain. Well, we've done that. Now the internet. Um, actually exceeds the computational power of the human brain. What's interesting about this too is that when I first started, when I was sitting in the chairs that you're sitting in now, in a different school, there was no internet. You know, essentially it came into being as, as I, I grew into it as, as a computer engineer. Um, we watched it go from essentially a network where we just connected a bunch of computers together and that was sort of fun and happy and we communicated by sending messages from our school to another school and things like this. And then when it became millions of devices, multiple millions of devices, we started to think, this is sort of interesting. When we looked at it, when I was, when I was working at Bell Canada, we are looking at it from the top down and saying, you know, this is starting to look like some sort of, you know, uh, environment, some sort of ecological environment. It's sort of like nature, like, like a weather forecasting, like a weather system. And then we said, you know, it's actually starting to look more like a biological ecosystem, the way that it operates. And now, since we now have trillions of devices on the internet, it's looking a lot like a neural network. It's looking a lot like and behaving like a, a human brain. And what makes this more interesting is, why does that? Because we're all humans attached to the ends, constantly talking and interacting. So part of us is in this environment. And that's where we get to the extended mind theory, which is the thesis, which says that, says that the mind is to a certain degree, we're already physically and virtually part of this network. And how is that true? Well, we interact with social media, which is sort of a, a frictionless environment between the virtual space, our mind, our thoughts, and the memes, and eventually they get right onto the internet um, in a way that interacts. And essentially, physical and mind we see presented in the network. We're al already offloading a lot of our activities, a lot of our cognitive load, onto one of these things. Um, I used to have to remember where to be and what to do. Now I'm, this phone tells me where, where I need to be and when, when to do it, tells me how to get there. Um, I don't have to remember names, I don't have to remember dates. I don't have to calculate things, I've got a calculator on that. So more and more we're taking a lot of the cognitive load, our memory, our thoughts, and putting them on devices or up into the cloud. And this is very interesting because now it connects us even, the, even more to this environment. In the center of this, we're building artificial intelligence, really machine learning expert systems. And this is where a lot of you are going to end up, not just as computer scientists or engineers, but social scientists, philosophers, ethicists, lawyers. This is where the jobs are going to be. This is where the interesting things are going to happen. Right now, you know, we've, we've already built computers that can beat the best chess master around, not a problem. We also have seen um, computers and artificial intelligence, intelligence pass for a real human. In fact, before long, it'd be very indistinguishable whether you're talking to a real human or artificial intelligence online. And especially now with deep fakes and everything, we can mimic, um, you know, mimic uh, real humans in terms of uh, a virtual environment or video or even in, in large movies. 
about 2070, we're predicting that the internet will reach where artificial intelligence will be some sort of singularity where artificial intelligence will be able to program itself in ways that we not, may not fully understand. Right now, the internet is the first system that we as humans have built that we don't really understand. Um, it's a big complex system that sort of operates you know, slightly beyond our reach. Will machines reach some sort of level of, of self-awareness in your lifetime? <coughs> A bigger question there is, how do we know what's alive? We haven't even defined what, what's living and what's not living. So artificial intelligence could be a living sort of system that, that uh, happens. Now, you may say, hey, you know, this is, we're not living a simulation. I can see, I can feel, I can hear, I can smell. But let's just think about this. Right now we have cameras and we have display technology that's better than human eye, that can fool your human eye. Um, and we do that in 3D. So right now we see in about, 32K. Uh, so right now we have, you can go out and buy an 8K television today. You know, in 10 years you buy, you'll be able to buy a 32K television. We already have screens like that, they're just conclusively expensive. Um, and same with cameras. We have very, very good cameras that can, can do that sort of thing. Audio, audio, high fidelity audio, we can always trick the ears. Uh, unfortunately, the ears are the easiest things to trick these days. We can recreate the feelings in the mind, so we can put electrodes on, one, on someone's head and we can actually inject electromagnetic uh, energy into, into one's brain and we can create the same sort of feelings and effect that you would, you would sort of have. Conversely, we can take and pull out from the human brain and we can actually see visual imagery. We can get you to concentrate on an apple and a banana and we can see an apple and banana on the screen or someone's face. So this exists right now. Chemically, we can recreate smells and tastes. They tried this in movie theaters when I was growing up. It wasn't a big hit. Uh, we used to use popcorn now. Um, haptic devices. So the gloves and the suits that may put on for gaming and virtual gaming and this type of biofeedback that you get if you're flying a fighter jet or, or even in the cars now in terms of, of self-driving cars. This is rapidly evolving. And we have VR headsets. If you're doing gaming, you'd be well familiar with these sorts of things. And I have a drone that I, with a VR headset that I was quite tempted to bring the drone here and fly it around but they wouldn't let me. Um, but these things exist right now, and the technology is getting better and better that really can fool you and bring you out into that environment. And we use augmented reality in the streets right now. What does that mean? What it means is essentially, you know, I could be looking through some glasses and I get head that's display that actually starts to put um, information on what I see. You can see this in the phones, through your, pho your phone that would overlay, hey, this store, this is, this is the type of things they sell, Pokemon Go or, or um, orienteering uh, applications, things like that. So you're going to be able to actually be able to see this in regular, regular glasses right now. In fact, 10 years ago, you could do this. So I'm just going to leave you with one thought, is that you may or may not believe that you're actually living in a real simulation. Few of us do. However, you're going to have to accept that a good part of your life, whether it's half your life, is going to be spent in a simulation, in virtual reality, in the near future. Thank you very much.